We are continuing our coverage of the Chinese surveillance balloon that was shot down from the skies over the coast of South Carolina a short time ago. Now, that action was taken at the direction of President Biden. A source tells NBC News the U.S. government will now be attempting to recover its debris. Reactions from Washington are rolling in quickly. And with me now to share his reaction is a Democratic congressman of Nevada, Stephen Horsford, who sits on the Armed Services Committee. He is also the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Welcome to you, sir. Uh, first, your thoughts on the action that was taken today and what you think uh, should happen now. Well, first, I want to commend uh, President Biden, uh, Secretary Austin, uh, and our entire officials uh, at the Pentagon for acting decisively uh, to protect our national interest and sovereignty and to ensure that we're doing everything that we can to co collect now uh, the debris and whatever uh, intelligence they can get uh, from this surveillance balloon. The Armed Services Committee is actually having a full committee hearing on Tuesday. It was scheduled prior to uh, this information uh, around the, you know, emerging threats uh, of China on the United States. And our Financial Services Committee is having a hearing on the economic threats uh, posed by China. So Congress is already taking these issues and has been uh, very seriously. I want to commend uh, our chair on both the Armed Services Committee and the ranking member for doing that hearing. You know, I think the congressional piece of this is very important. All week we heard from a number of your Republican colleagues who were urging President Biden to essentially shoot the balloon down. We have heard from the president now and the uh, and uh, Secretary Austin about why that did not happen until now. The safety, given you know two school buses is large, uh, the debris area is about seven miles wide. The debris spread. Uh, China and the issue of China uh, seems to me like a very bipartisan issue that uh, Democrats and Republicans in this very interesting Congress can at least agree on. You talk about the financial threats, the economic threats. What is it that Congress can do? Because, again, the posture has been competition, not conflict. And in all the conversations I have had this week and today from U.S. officials, it seems to me they are not looking for conflict still, but they, they do know that China has not essentially played nice in the international sandbox. Well, one thing I can say for sure, the Armed Services Committee always works in a bipartisan manner when it comes to our national security. And although we are no longer in the majority, I'm confident that Chairman Rogers, working with our ranking member, um, uh, Mr. Smith, that we will continue to come together on these issues. I would like for the uh, Pentagon to come and brief the committee specifically on the events around this surveillance balloon, not only the threat that it posed to the United States, but what um, the People's Republic of China is doing all around the world in collecting surveillance information. We, we, this is not new information, no. but it is a, a, a threat, whether it's intellectual information, security information, surveillance information. I represent, in my district in Nevada, um, you know, the, the Nellis Air Force Base, Creech Air Force Base, the Nevada Test and Training Range. So we have a lot of critical assets throughout the United States. And we need to know, as members of Congress, we need transparency on, on what information is being collected, even if it has to be in a classified setting, so that we know what more we have to do to act, to protect our interest. Um, yes, we want to not elevate uh, or escalate issues with China, but we also need to have strong resolve uh, that we're not going to let them, you know, in, in, um, in, impede our sovereignty. Mm, sovereignty, a word that I had not heard from the United States in relation to China this week until today in this balloon. Uh, lastly, on this topic, so are you now in the banned TikTok camp? I think a lot, one of the other conversations I was having this week is uh, TikTok now seems uh, dead on arrival, for lack of a better term, in terms of support for that app in Congress. Your thoughts? Well, we had already uh, been directed by uh, our officials that oversee that process throughout Congress to no longer use that app uh, for members of Congress in an official capacity. Um, Again, I think we need to know all of the information around how these types of technology and innovation are being used to collect information, how it's uh, being used 
against us uh, by China mm -hmm. or Russia or anyone else that may be involved in these efforts. I'm on the TikToks, but we will be watching. Before I let you go, I want to talk about uh, the meeting that leadership of the Congressional Black Caucus had with President Biden and Vice President Harris this week. Um, what did you ask for in that meeting? What did the president promise you? And are we going to see some very pointed language in the State of the Union speech given by the president on Tuesday on police reform? Well, I want to thank the president and the vice president for first taking our meeting seriously and in a timely manner. We asked, and within days, uh, it was made a priority. And Sec I, I was told the meeting was supposed to be 45 minutes, and it lasted two hours. It did. And it, the president was very engaged. We had several of our members uh, talking about a, a number of things. We asked for three things. Number one, that the president use the moment of the State of the Union to center the issue of policing and its impact on the lives of people in this country from a public safety standpoint. This issue disproportionately affects black people and black men, uh, but not only black people. It affects all of our communities. Secondly, we ask for the president to use the power of his office and his relationships to help bring Republicans into this process, because we know to get anything meaningful done, it's going to take Republican support, both in the Senate and the House. And finally, we asked for the president to work with us on pursuing additional executive actions beyond what he already implemented last May, which were great, but apply only to federal law enforcement, and we need more guidance to local and state law enforcement. I want to be clear about this. Did the president say yes to all three of those things? He agreed to our approach and with working with us, and I believe on Tuesday at the State of the Union with the family, uh, the Nichols family uh, in the gallery, uh, this issue will be a priority. All right. Congressman Stephen Horsford, chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, member of the Armed Services Committee, thank you so much for coming to the Green Table today. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate your time.